Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. Uh, before we start today's discussion of precious metals, gold, and gold miners, let me uh, plug in a small complaint that investing.com lost all of my drawings on the chart indicating the, the developments in the gold cycles. That, that's quite annoying. So in future, I might just switch to trading view. Now, just a brief look at gold. So far, so good. The ongoing intermediate cycle and the ongoing first short-term daily cycle is only 23 days old. That's uh, still relatively young, especially for the intermediate cycle. But before we uh, look at some more details, let's have a look at the US dollar, the DXY index. The short-term daily cycle is right now 33 days old. And it looks like a week ago or 10 days ago, the cycle might have actually already topped at 33 days and with an average duration of around uh, two months for these short-term daily cycles. The cycle is already um, perhaps beyond the midpoint. So the recent top that was in the second half of August is likely the top for the ongoing short-term cycle in dollar. However, right now dollar seems to be bouncing from the 50-day moving average. So perhaps a bit of a bounce to come a little bit closer to the upper range of the Bollinger Bands. It also looks like the Bollinger Bands are narrowing, but by then, by the time a bit of a bounce develops over the next few days, the daily cycle on dollar would already be um, at 40 days or more, and it'll be uh, time for dollar to come down into the end of its uh, daily cycle. So maybe a bit of a sideways move for gold if dollar is bouncing from the 50-day moving average. Uh, this sideways move would be um, consistent with uh, struggling for a short while with this resistance at around 1830-1840, that's from the recent July highs on gold price. And this uh, level of around 1840, 1830 has also been support zone for quite a while back in uh, late 2020 and early 2021. A relatively significant support resistance zone that has played out for quite a while already. And additionally, just around 1840, we also have the upper range of the Bollinger Bands. And as the Bollinger Bands are not really narrow, they're pretty wide, poking above those Bollinger Bands might actually indicate some sort of a cool down coming. So uh, perhaps meandering just above the 200 day moving average, trying to see if gold breaks below that while US dollar is considering whether it wants to continue down into the cycle low. And once dollar decisively moves down into the cycle low, that's perhaps when the short-term daily cycle in gold might actually continue pushing higher. And by the time all of that develops, the daily cycle in gold will be perhaps at about one and a half months old. Usually these daily cycles on gold last for around one and a half to two months, sometimes longer than that, of course. So uh, based on this average duration at one and a half months, the cycle will be somewhat old meaning that the cycle might actually turn into the declining phase to bring gold back down to that support resistance, perhaps somewhere around 1830, before the second daily cycle of the ongoing intermediate cycle can start. So in the very short term, resistance around 1830, 1840 is likely to be a bit of a challenge. Over the next uh, two to three to four weeks, perhaps higher prices as the short term daily cycle on gold continues higher, and a couple of weeks after that, a bit of a correction into the short-term daily cycle low. But in the intermediate term, as the intermediate cycle is still pretty young, the intermediate cycles usually last for around half a year. Again, unfortunately, I lost all of my notation here on the investing.com chart. Anyway, as these intermediate cycles usually last for around half a year, the cycle is still pretty young. And I would expect um, at least a retest of recent highs at around uh, 1900 before the ongoing intermediate cycle tops. Let's move on to GDX. GDX uh, has been underperforming gold for quite a while. We see that GDX is still only now bouncing from its support zone. It has been a very important support zone playing out for years already. The support zone somewhere around 31 to uh, 32 dollars on GDX. But the technicals right now are pretty good. We see GDX is coming back up from the lower range of the Bollinger Bands. We see RSI is recovering. It's only into neutral right now, so there is still a lot of potential to go higher before RSI comes anywhere close to overbought. And in the very short term of the next few days, perhaps as gold is uh, taking its time with the resistance at 1840, 
Perhaps GDX will take its time with the resistance at the 50-day moving average before breaking up to the next resistance at around 200-day moving average. Next, before we move on to three interesting charts that are guaranteed to bring you to the edge of your seat to, to uh, draw your attention, so to speak, let me just mention that today I posted this somewhat detailed review of uh, grains and natural gas for the members at myfinanceteacher.org. And if you uh, scroll down a little bit, uh, you will see by the dates on each of these posts that I update the members quite regularly on the precious metals, on energy, on other commodities, on the general stock markets, and on cryptos. So for more on all of those, consider joining us at myfinanceteacher.org. Now let's uh, move on to uh, some of those interesting charts, uh, starting with the optimism index on gold. It's very important to look at optimism because you don't want to enter the markets when everybody is too excited about the asset. Looking at gold, generally intermediate cycle lows in gold, as indicated over here by these red circles, are pretty regular. As I mentioned, these intermediate cycles on average last around half a year. And usually a good buying opportunity, intermediate cycle lows, take place in gold when this optimism index is somewhere around 30, somewhere around this green line at the bottom of the chart. However, more recently, over the last couple of years, through 2020 and this year so far, perhaps because of uh, trillions of dollars being printed or for whatever reason, intermediate cycle lows take place with the optimism index uh, somewhere around 50 rather than 30. So uh, as the bull market in gold is developing, it looks like the corrections don't really bring optimism all the way down to those uh, blood on the street levels. The most recent intermediate cycle low, that's in uh, early August, as you see, actually came together with a positive divergence on this optimism index, where the swoosh drop in gold price in June actually brought optimism even lower than it was at the lower price point at the intermediate cycle low more recently in early August. But looking into the future, looking into intermediate outlook, the optimism index so far has only rallied from somewhere around 50 to uh, slightly above 60. And usually intermediate cycles would top with this optimism index much closer to this red line, somewhere around uh, 75, 77. Even the previous couple of intermediate cycle tops, which were kind of disappointing, the one in early summer, and the one in uh, early 2021, even these two uh, relatively disappointing intermediate cycle tops brought this optimism index pretty close to that red line. So for that reason, I think there is still quite a lot of potential for gold price to continue higher in the intermediate term. And next, moving on to uh, miners versus gold, let's have a look at this chart, where on the vertical axis we have the price of GDX, and on the horizontal axis we have gold price. Each dot on this scatter plot represents a monthly data point for GDX and gold price. At the moment, there are a couple of dots over here today, by the way, it's 1st of September. And uh, there is a dot for September on this chart as well, although, although today is only the first day of September. So there are a couple of dots kind of coinciding over here, one for August and one for September. We see that these dots are under this trend line, so miners are at the moment undervalued versus the gold price. But this undervaluation is not really that extreme, it's not really that painful. There are uh, several times in history when these dots were further below this trend line. Nevertheless, right now it looks like miners are quite undervalued versus the gold price as the dot is some distance away under this trend line. Actually, another look at this same type of idea is looking at the ratio of GDX to gold price. The ratio ranging anywhere from um, somewhere like uh, 0 0.014 to somewhere around 0 0.023. And there is a 50 week moving average over here. This is weekly chart. And we see that uh, the swings below and above this 50 week moving average are pretty regular. And again, right now, miners are quite undervalued versus gold price with the ratio of GDX to gold around 8% below this 50-week moving average of this ratio. So if, of course nobody knows the future, but it's likely that gold pushes higher in the intermediate term. 
if gold manages to push higher to those uh, recent highs at least around 1900 that's when i think miners might actually start to catch up with gold that, that's when we'll see this ratio of uh, gdx to gold to uh, come back to this 50-day moving average and above that so that's the outlook uh, for the miners in the intermediate term and lastly talking about the miners a couple of days ago i uh, posted another miner valuation for a trio of uh, very intriguing miners uh, kinross kirkland lake and angla gold ashanti and uh, perhaps one or two weeks from now i might actually make this valuation video public on youtube we'll see about that but in either case if you want to receive regular and timely updates on a range of assets again consider joining us at myfinanceteacher.org for now though let me wish you a pleasant day and good luck in your trades